When we're working on developing recipes in the kitchen, we don't often think about effervescence as one of the properties that we have access to. Well, today on WTF, we're going to look at texturous fizzy and how to add intrigue to any dish, even something like a pineapple upside down cake. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Garin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. So today, Scott and I are going to be talking all about Texturus Fizzy, which is a really fun ingredient and we have a really fun recipe and demo to show you. Now, if you're tuning in to WTF for the first time, so every week Scott and I will cover a really interesting ingredient and or technique and show you know what it is, we'll talk about it, its usages, and usually we'll demo one to two recipes on how you can get started. So if you do like what you see, please remember to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified about our content, and it comes out every single Tuesday. So we're always working on something, and there's something new and exciting coming out here. OK, now back to this particular episode of WTF. We're going to be talking about Texturus Fizzy, um, and maybe before we even get into fizzy, why don't we talk a little bit about the Texturus line, which is something that's pretty unique to Modernist Pantry. Yeah, so uh, Texturus is made by uh, Ferran and Albert um, Adria. <laughs> 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 I want to make sure I got Albert right. <laughs> uh, Ferran and Albert Adria from El Bouilly. So they made, uh, really made modern cuisine. Uh, they brought it to the forefront you know, in the 2000s, and uh, they came up with this line of really inspiring ingredients that you can use in many different ways to you know, bring a bit of intrigue to dishes. So uh, something like this fizzy that you can add a, a little bit of effervescence, something that you don't normally find in all foods, uh, you can add it to any dish. So uh, they have many different types of ingredients, uh, some as simple as you know, sodium citrate made for uh, like a free-flowing cheese sauce uh, to ingredients for spherification. So we have all sorts of really great things that come from the Texturus line, and this just happens to be one of them. Yeah, and uh, if you do recognize Ferran's name, not from his restaurant work, you probably hear him hear about him a lot in the news these yes. days. Uh, but I think we're very grateful to him for really opening up this movement that really enabled Modernist Pantry mm -hmm. to be in existence. So we're really happy to be uh, the exclusive purveyor of their line of products in the U.S. here. So. Let's get into fizzy a little bit. What exactly is a fizzy? So fizzy is mainly made of sugar, uh, and it's an elongated little kind of uh, strip. And what is in there is a little bit of uh, sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, and some citric acid. So when that gets hydrated, so we can actually put that, you know, if you were to put it in a little bit of water, it would start to fizz up. Um, think of it almost as an edible bath bomb. Mm -hmm. um, some people may say, oh, it's like Alka-Seltzer, but it's not. It doesn't have that alkaline flavor, so mm -hmm. you, you don't have to worry about equating it to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you eat it, you're going to get that really bit of, you know, slight bit of effervescence that you would if you drank like a, a seltzer water. Yeah, and that sounds really fun. Now, what are some uses that usages, <laughs> usages, usages that uses, you can have, yes. <laughs> uses that you can have with, uh, with a fizzy? So fizzy is, is uh, very simple to use. Sometimes uh, one of the things that uh, Ferran did was he would make a, uh, a candy out of it and then add the fizzy in at the end and it would almost souffle the sugar. So mm. you'd have this really soft kind of texture, uh, slightly crispy souffled sugar. And that's really cool. Uh, just for getting sugar in a completely different texture. Mm -hmm. uh, you can add this straight, you know, you can put it to a, a drink or you can just eat them straight. But what I came up with is a way to kind of coat them in a flavoring and make them almost uh, waterproof until you eat them. Okay. I'm really excited to see that. And I know that like there's a similar similarities to our culinary crystals, which people can yes. put into chocolate ones without worrying about it popping. Is that the same theory? Can you put fizzy just straight into chocolate or no? Yeah, so you can actually put it right into chocolate. You can put it into caramel as long as the hydration, you know, the water content is very low on it. Any water that gets into this is going to start the reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, I put this right into a ganache and that was enough fat content to, you know, coat it and keep it for a few days. So if you wanted to make a truffle out of this, you could absolutely, you know, break them up a little bit. You can also grind this and put it into 
things uh, like a truffle too. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily grind it to a fine powder because then you're kind of wasting all the uh, the you know the texture that you get from the the sugar that's in there. Mm -hmm. But if you break it up into smaller pieces, you can put it into a truffle, and then you can get that you know crunch and then that kind of fizziness that comes with it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm excited to see the demo here. So it's very simple. I. I uh, and one thing I wanted to say, because I, I didn't necessarily answer it, there's mm -hmm. uh, the difference between this and culinary crystals. So culinary crystals, when you put them in your mouth, they will pop. There will be like a burst that happens. Mm -hmm. With these, it is a slow kind of just fizz that happens um, rather than that that pop. So they're not the same. And if you wanted to try one, you can actually you know, sure. get the, the right texture out of it. It's like you're not hearing like a big pop, but mm -hmm. you get that little you know, mild bubbling that happens on your tongue. So... If you eat them straight, you'll get it. But if you put it on something like we're gonna do here with a, a really kind of sweet uh, caramelized pineapple upside down cake, we want to kind of fight that that sugar content with this, and you know a bit of acidity and some more pineapple flavor that we're gonna add is going to really help this dish and kind of liven it up. So I have the fizzy here, and I'm just gonna put it into a bowl, and then I have our culinary crystal uh, flavor base. Now with this, if I wanted to, you could add the flavor drops to it and flavor it that way. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to kind of coat them and change the exterior of them so you get a really kind of cool looking texture on the outside. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take, uh, for every ounce of fizzy, I'm gonna take one teaspoon, which is a little bit more than you would use for our culinary crystals, just because there's a lot of surface area to cover. And I'm just gonna mix it up. Now make sure I mix this and coat them very well you'll see they start to get, you know, glisten a little bit and the fat is not going to start the reaction. Okay. So I'm just going to start here and mix it up very well. Yeah. And just FYI, the flavor base is a vegan fat. So if there's any concerns about yep. that, it's uh, it is vegan friendly, totally natural. And then I'm going to add in our pineapple powder. Just kind of coat the top here. Then as I go, they'll start, the fat on there will start picking up that pineapple powder. Mm -hmm you want to coat them as well as possible. Some of these, not coating, but that's fine. You can always add a little bit more of the flavor base if you need to. Mm -hmm. But if you get them right, you get these where they're coated in that pineapple flavor, mm -hmm. right? With that yep. nice, really kind of intense pineapple powder flavor. And then, I like this because of the, the flavor base has like, uh, kind of a rich fattiness mm. to it. So when, once that melts away, you get that pineapple, then you get that fizziness from it. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like eating a, a real, you know, like a fresh pineapple. You get that, that bromelain, that kind of tingly yep. sensation that comes from the pineapple itself. So. Yeah, when you eat it by, when you eat the fizzy by itself, it's like very, very, I don't want to say tangy, but it's not quite tangy, but it's like. Yeah, it's got a good bite of acidity yeah, to it. it I does. mean, it has citric acid in yeah. it. Yeah, so and I like that. the pineapple powder kind of like yep. mellows it out, smoothes it and the out, flavor base and is it's a fat, layered, so. yeah, it becomes a lot more nuanced. So we have a nice uh, caramelized pineapple upside down cake, so we do a thin slices of pineapple on top. We actually make a, like a French caramel, almost like bring it to where just before it burns, we put it down, layer it with uh, pineapple and cherries, so it's a very even color over the top. Mm -hmm. uh, then we put it in our cake, which has a lot of pineapple mixed into it, mm -hmm. and then so since it's it's very sweet, we do two things. We have these, you know, the fizzy that we can then garnish over the top. So in every bite, you'll get a little bit of crunch, and then you'll also get that nice uh, burst of acidity. Mm -hmm. But then we take a uh, brown butter, and then we make a brown butter buttercream. So it's half brown butter, half regular butter. We make a nice buttercream. We add a bit of salt to it, it's just so it kind of works really well, you know, warmer flavors this time of year so we can have like a really kind of uh, you know the end of summer we get that uh, pineapple still and then we have those warmer flavors of the the coming of fall so if you want to try it Janie go right ahead I certainly will be happy to do that and yeah. kind of while I'm doing that so you know we mentioned pineapple powder and a few episodes ago we did um, all of our fruit powders you can get the link in the description below yep. to see all the variety of them so you can basically make any flavor of fizzy potentially if you yeah. wanted to. Yep. So you could do any flavor of fizzy, and like I said, you could also, if you go from our flavors of um, 
you know, fruit powders, you can also do our vinegar powders. It really depends on what you are looking for. So you can, if you want to do a savory dish with like a nice crunch and a bitter effervescence, uh, you could do that. You could also go into our, uh, you know, culinary crystals flavoring, the flavor drops. And from there you have hundreds upon hundreds of options and mix and match and do whatever you want. So you can make these flavor or taste exactly as uh, you want them to. Yeah, and this cake is really good. So the full recipe is on the blog, yep. I believe. So you can get the entire recipe. Um, this is like a really mellow cake. It's got like lots of bright, fresh pineapple fruit flavors, but at the same time, it's very, very light. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't have that kind of like saccharine taste that I personally always associate yep. with a lot of upside down cakes. It gets overly saturated. Yes. Um, but this one is really light, and I like the fizzy on it because it does just give you that extra little bit of pop. Yeah, the bit of fat and the bit of acidity really kind of even out the cake because the cake itself is is relatively sweet. There's a lot of sugar. I mean, it, it's cake that has caramel on top of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so some, it's a little bit of fat and a little bit of that savoriness, and then also the you know the pop of the uh, the fizzy um, really brings it out. Yeah. So if someone wants to prep a dish like this, or they just want to use the fizzy, um, how far ahead of time can they prep this? So with these fizzy, I've taken them, I've coated them, and, and the good thing about the flavor base is that I just pop them in the freezer for maybe two minutes to kind of set that, uh, you know, that flavor base on the outside, and then I've kept them out on the counter, uncovered, just as like a test, and I was able to keep them for over a week, and at that point I didn't really want to keep them on the, the counter for more than a week, but, um, but yeah, you could potentially go longer. I would suggest always covering it, throwing it in the cabinet, but you don't have to worry about it just, you know, picking up moisture from the air because it is coated in that um, flavor base. Okay, and if someone wants to prep the cake ahead of time, can they put the fizzy on the cake? Like Yeah, um, so before? people may be able to see there is some fizzy on the cake here, and uh, you can see maybe one or two of them have started to react, but mm -hmm. that's because we, you know, refrigerated it, and you know, before our shoot today and took it out. So this is actually about two days old at this point mm -hmm. where, you know, you haven't had that fizzy really reacting, especially in, you know, a, a moist environment. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if someone wanted to, you know, buy a can of the fizzy and just kind of start playing around with it, any tips and tricks to help them get started? I think uh, if it's in its normal form before it gets coated with anything, just make sure it's, it's covered because, yeah, if you have a a humid kitchen or it's you know near a dishwasher where there's a lot of steam something like that it's going to start to react once it picks up any of that water uh, but as long as it's covered in a cool dry place it's going to be good um, if it's water it's going to react if it's fat it's not so that's a, a the biggest rule you can really work with uh, other than that you should be all set Okay, that's wonderful. And if you do want to see Scott make this entire cake, there is a video up on our Instagram and Facebook. So that's at Modernist Pantry. Uh, you can kind of see all the steps. And of course, as always, the recipe and all the extra episode references and whatnot are in the links in the description below. So I'm excited to go and finish this cake because it's delicious. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. And if you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences.